Many people told me to do a walkthrough on the different setups and progression through each floor of dungeons, starting with your first entrance run all the way up to sweating floor 6 with no effort. I'll leave chapters in the video so you can skip right to the floor you want to see. All I ask in return is for you to subscribe. I'm literally 3,000 subscribers from YouTube rank, so spending 2 seconds to subscribe means the world to me. I post useful Skyblock guides and update videos every day, so if you want to be the best player possible with the most accurate information, make sure you are subscribed with channel notifications on. Now, let's start off with the basics. Catacomb Zero, Floor Zero. You haven't done anything yet, and you have no idea how you're supposed to be able to beat the entrance because your current gear, you're getting absolutely destroyed. What are you ever supposed to use to survive? Well, unfortunately, due to balance mechanics, there really isn't an easy way to survive. I will say that no matter what, for those of you who have been watching my mage-only series, you'll know that I had to do the fairy souls, all of them, in order to be able to survive Dungeons Floor Zero. This is because the mobs in Dungeons do a ton of damage, so if you're stuck at the very start, you're probably wondering, what armor, what should I be using to try and survive best I can? Just so I don't need to wait for someone who's like Catacombs 28 to take pity on me and do it for me. Well, here's my best recommendation. Buy a set of heavy armor, and the reason I'm recommending heavy armor is because it doesn't actually have a Catacombs requirement. You can get the entire set of this, and I'll go ahead and purchase this right now just to kind of show you the example of this. And what you're going to want to do is make sure you add hot potato books, max this thing out as much as you can. Make sure you have the Titanic Reforge on because it'll give you some health and defense since obviously both of your stats will be low. Instead of putting something like Reinforced on it, you're going to want to just get as much stats as you can up. The reason you want to get as much stats as you can up is because of this blessing. So throughout dungeons when you're playing, you'll do secrets and puzzles that'll give you blessings that increase your stats. The higher your base stats are when you enter the catacombs, the more effective these blessings are on you. So it's important to get as much stats as you can before starting a dungeon. This is why I recommend getting a set that gives a ton of defense and some health, especially after hot potato booking it. Another thing you can do to increase the set is to grind out some undead essence. Then you can use this essence crafting menu in order to upgrade the set to 5 stars. This will allow you to get higher stats on this set. You'll see once I get it to 5 stars here, the set is now much, much stronger. As you can see, it now has 473 defense and 227 HP inside of dungeons. You can see that based on the gray text on the right hand side. For a weapon, anything like the Aspect of the Dragons or just the strongest weapon you can get your hands on will do just fine inside of dungeons for this floor. Now, floor 1 basically uses the exact same gear, but I'm not just going to say use the same gear and cut to the next floor. It's important to get certain boss drops from floor 1 that you're going to need to progress. The two main ones you're going to get are if you are playing any class, you're going to want to pick up a Bonzo Max. You can get this from most of the chests down in Floor 1, but the reason this is so important is because it gives really high stats, only has a Catacombs requirement of completing Floor 1, and allows you to revive yourself if you take Fatal Damage. You can also 5-star the set to give it even more stats, like you can see some of these that are maxed out, give a pretty decent amount of stats. Now, if you are specifically Mage, you can also get a weapon called the Bonzo Staff. And this will pretty much be your best friend for a good while until you're able to get a different weapon, which I'll explain later. The Bonzo spa Staff acts like a super duper weak version of the, of the very well-known Spirit Scepter. You basically shoot a balloon and it explodes on impact, dealing good damage to nearby mobs. You can use this for room clearing or anything of the sort. Make sure to pick up these two weapons when you're playing Floor 1. By the time you're ready for Floor 2, you'll probably be Catacombs level 1, 2, or maybe 3 if you've grinded a lot. And this means we can't really use much different gear. However, now you can absolutely put on your Bonzo's mask, put on your Bonzo staff, and you should be able to survive through floor two just fine. If you're not, try to find someone who's a little bit higher level to try and help you out, but it's more important to just try and grind a lot of floor ones. As you can see, if I show my own floor one completions, I took out Bonzo around 78 times, which is a lot more than most people will end up doing, but I'm telling you, you'll need the XP to be able to use different items. So for floor 2, this should be your last grinding spot before we change up our gear significantly. Before you start grinding floor 3, I would recommend getting to Catacombs level 9. The reason why I would recommend Catacombs level 9 is so we can use a new set of armor, and this is going to be the Zombie Soldier armor. If you're rich, you can buy a Legendary set off the auction house for a little under a million coins. If not, you could pick up an Epic set for probably less than 40,000 coins in total, which is significantly cheaper. However, the Legendary one will be higher stats. Now, Zombie Soldier gives a ton of HP and defense compared to the raw stats of the heavy armor. As you can see, this one gives, if I actually throw this set on, 
you can see that I'm getting 700 defense and 554 health, which is really, really good. I'd recommend adding the reinforced or forge to it to give you some extra defense to help survive some of the tougher enemies. Similar to the heavy armor, you can actually throw the zombie soldier armor into the essence crafting menu, and with undead essence, you can five start making it even stronger. I'd recommend throwing a full set on this or use your class helmet. Make sure to be using your class helmets such as the Mender Helmet and the Dark Goggles. This will be great for healers and mages. For everyone else, just go ahead and slap a full set of Zombie Soldier on and you should be pretty much good to go. I'd recommend switching out your sword for the Adaptive Blade. The Adaptive Blade is with Wither Essence, you got it from Floor 2, and it's a significantly stronger sword than your Aspect of the Dragons. Make sure to pick this guy up before you're ready for the next floor. Before playing Floor 4, I would recommend you do as many Professor boss fights as you can physically handle. I ended up doing around 90 of them, which is a lot more than most people will probably want to do. But again, I would recommend just doing as many as you physically can handle. Also, try and pick up a full set of Adaptive Armor. This is the set you got from Floor 3. It's pretty rare to actually find in chests. You might need to end up spending a few million coins off the auction house. And yeah, that's right. You're probably going to need to spend a few million coins. So if you aren't rich enough, get grinding. You're going to want to get this. The adaptive armor pretty much gives you buffs based on what class you choose, but nonetheless gives a really, really good amount of stats. If you're having trouble surviving with adaptive armor, you can use some zombie soldier pieces since it'll be slightly tankier, but floor four is very, very difficult. Don't be surprised if it takes you many, many tries to get your first couple runs done. Once you get one floor four run done, I would strongly recommend grabbing yourself a hyper cleaver. This is because it's a super powerful sword that does great AoE damage, making the boss fight significantly easier. There's some great guides on how to cheese the floor four boss fight. I would recommend checking some of those out because they'll make the boss fight significantly easier. Floor five is where things get very tricky, and I would say it's mandatory at this point to be at least catacombs level 15 or 16. If you aren't, go back to previous floors and start grinding. You're also going to want to get a specific weapon if you are mage. This is going to be the one, the only, Spirit Scepter. You're going to want this for the boss and for clearing rooms because it's incredibly powerful, dealing a lot of damage very quickly. Make sure to put Ultimate Wise 5 on it and 5 star, of course. If you're Berserker or basically any other class, go ahead and make sure you're still using the Hyper Cleaver. If you're Archer, this is where you finally get to start playing the game. You can use a bow called the Bone Meringue, and this Bone Meringue acts like exactly what you think a boomerang would do. You throw it forward, it hits some enemies, and it comes back dealing a lot of enemies to damage, okay? So if you're an archer, you can finally start playing the game properly and actually pick yourself up this Bone Meringue. Get a couple of them if you can, because you can switch between your hotbar slots and throw them very fast, racking up a ton of damage. This is when you also want to start switching into your main class set. If you are archer, you can actually use the Shadow Assassin set that you get from this floor, while it's going to be incredibly squishy and you'll die a lot, you can use this if you think you're prepared for it, but otherwise you basically want to stick to the same gear you used for Floor 4 for armor. But this is where everything's about to change once we get into the end game. Floor 6 is incredibly difficult, and I have a ridiculous amount of guides on tips on how to survive through the floors, so if you end up feeling a little lost on Floor 6 after you finish watching this, check out some of my most recent videos that are saying like, oh, this item is super overpowered, never die with this pet, things like that. I'll leave a link to them in the cards throughout the video that you've probably been seeing, but floor 6 requires basically the maximum amount of gear. You're going to need to get carried through your first floor 6 run. Once you have been successfully carried through floor 6, you'll unlock the Necromancer Lord armor. And I'll be honest, while you're still a low catacombs level, I would highly recommend anyone wears this armor. This is because of the massive amount of EHP it'll give you especially when you put the giant reforge on it. While your damage will be low, it will help severely with leveling up your catacomb skill. This will help you level up all the way to catacombs 25, which is where I'm actually currently going. As you can see, I'm getting, I'm a little over halfway to catacombs 25. Once you're there, if you want, you could spend 100 million on a Midas staff, but you don't have to. But I would say at this point, it's pretty much mandatory to get Necromancer Lord armor. If you can't afford the chest plate for Shadow Assassin and Necromancer Lord, Go ahead, slap a legendary zombie soldier chestplate on it. It's basically the same thing, just a little bit weaker. If you want to sit there and painfully grind while waiting for floor 7 to release, and you get all the way up to around catacombs level 29, this is where you can switch into a non-catacombs set, like superior dragon armor or frozen blaze, depending on what you want, depending on what your class requires, you can switch into one of these sets. Now, I'm not quite there yet, so I'm not quite qualified to give information on that just yet, but there are some great other people such as Leo CTHL, who are actually these ridiculously high catacombs levels and have tested these armor sets out. So if you manage to get there, go check that guy out and see which set fits you best. But that's really all I have for the six floors. 
That's it for today's video. If you have any specific questions about your class, a floor, or a recommendation, leave them in the comments. I've replied to just about everyone, so that's your best bet to get it answered. One last time, consider subscribing. These videos take a lot of work, but for daily Hypixel Skyblock guides and updates, and to help me reach that last step to YouTube rank, make sure you are subscribed. Thanks, and take care.